aspects of the children in private schools. You put, it, put them together and then subtract that number from the number of the average school going age children in, children in Nigeria. But for now, the commission is really short of that statistics. Recent trends in basic education indicate federal government's desire to tackle access to education and improve quality. How is UBEC gearing up to this challenge? Well, infrastructure for Beijing, we feel we're doing well. But we're being uh, challenged by the size and number of children to cater for. However, with the various interventions, the various supports, and especially the, co uh, the, the commitment of the federal government in basic education, we're sure that we're seeing some light. What have been the gains of the cooperation between Nigeria and the international development partners in the delivery of basic education? UBEC is closely engaged with JICA. JICA means Japan International Cooperation Agency. Speaking to you, they are constructing through our effort a model school in FCT here, comprising kindergarten, primary, junior secondary school, and secondary school in FCT here. National advocacy and community mobilization campaigns have remained part of wider policy frameworks by UBEC to change parental attitudes and build support for girls' education. That's not all. The Commission has gone a step further to increase the availability and adequacy of school infrastructure, increasing the number of schools, especially girls-only schools, and improving school facilities across the states of the Federation. The report. Uh, commission, they make necessary to bring back these girls to school. We have uh, quite a number of girls, you know, in some states that are actually working. So Universal Building Education decided to construct girl, uh, special girl schools so that we can bring back these girls to school. of us in years to come by giving us such a project that will develop this community. We really appreciate the federal government and we appreciate the contractor for carrying good job. Actually, we have been very close with him. Anytime he has a problem, we come down to see the problem. And we thank the state uh, basic education too for coming closer to us, thinking of us, and actually having us in mind that Today, we have this project in our own area. We promise that actually we'll continue looking after this project. In Oyo State, the concern for the state government, but for the people and the of his people. So that is why a quality job is done here. I am really impressed. First and foremost, let me uh, appreciate the initiative to bring this project to Ogun State. And Ogun State is noted for its strides in education in Nigeria. And this addition, we push the frontiers further. I must add here that this, this cannot be enough for Ogun State. We need more of this kind of intervention. The UBEC and the federal government has been assisting the state governments in the pursuit of achieving greater height for the basic education, that is the primary education in the federation. So it goes without saying that intervention like this will assist our course and assist the children to achieve desired goals. Meanwhile, the construction of Junior Girls Model Secondary School at Ohoromi Community in Edo State is expected to provide conducive learning environment for girls in that community and five other neighboring communities. Now we are on pastoral. This one one week. Are you more blocks here? Are you more blocks? Yeah, the blocks you have. Urge all to ensure that their children and wards are in school. 
With the construction of more girls' schools across the country, Ubeck, however, believes that these barriers will soon be broken. Gender disparity is found in greater number of states in Nigeria, especially in junior secondary schools, than it is in primary level. To reduce this trend, UBEC has been leading advocacy visits to state governments and opinion leaders to create more access to girl-child education. We look at the western part of this country, it was realized, and also some parts of the northern part of this country, that girls were the ones that were leaving schools prematurely, and girls were the ones that were not going to school for some reasons, social reasons and some other economic reasons. So that's also give us the opportunity to introduce an education that will cater for the needs of those girls, even if they were to leave the schools after graduating from junior secondary school, that they will be self-employed in their, in, the, in their husband's house, if it is for the sake of marriage that they left, or it is on economic reasons, whatever the reason could be. Uh, a thousand times, you know where she is. But now with this, we'll definitely encourage education for the girls. So it's a very timely thing. We appreciated it. The biggest industry in Benue State has been and is still education. We are trying to improve on our agriculture and make it the mainstay of our economy. But as of today, the biggest industry is education. And so you can see that we simply don't joke with education. The governor will tell you times without number that himself had a checkered history of personal educational development. He went through all sorts, but today holds a doctor of philosophy degree, and therefore does not joke with education. If you go to Israel, you'll be surprised to hear this. A very small country, highly developed in all aspects of life, and you will not believe it, that the mainstay of their economy sharing your time with us and from all of us here it's bye for now NTA Property Connect, the latest property international magazine in town. Second edition is out. Get connected today with lands and houses on sale. Mortgage institutions that can help you access your dream home. Location of the best selling building materials. Educative articles on where to get expert services. NTA Property Connect International Magazine is available with vendors and every NTA station worldwide. Grab a copy today. To advertise your properties, conferences, exhibitions or sponsorship, call us on 0806054-9808 or by the people to appease the goddess for greater fish harvest and protection against river accident. The exact date or the origin of the festival in Ekwe is not known. However, sources suggest the people of Ekwe land staged a border regatta before 1933. The festival is fun-filled with various cultural, sporting 
and recreational activities to showcase the life of the people and also to act as a time. And top of the news, Nigeria's President Muhammadu Buhari has expressed concern that despite the Criminal Justice Act of 2015, corruption cases by the federal government are not progressing as speedily as they should towards conclusion, thereby giving a negative impression that crime pays. Speaking at an interactive workshop on the judiciary and the fight against corruption, the president is particularly worried that the courts not only tolerate delay tactics by lawyers, but also allow some of them to frustrate the reforms introduced by law to hasten justice delivery. State House correspondent Adam Musambo reports. The workshop put together by the Presidential Advisory Committee Against Corruption, the National Judicial Institute, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, as well as the Commonwealth Secretariat, the opportunity for stakeholders in the national fight against corruption to interact and agree on the basic tenets and guiding principles towards achieving a corrupt free Nigeria for greater growth and development. President Muhammad Buhari, who declared the workshop open, said the priority attention accorded the fight against corruption by his administration is aimed at building a new Nigeria and repositioning its economy in the face of dwindling resources. He, however, said the desired objectives cannot be achieved when the judiciary is seen as being distant from. Therefore, ensure that all hands are on deck, working towards a corrupt free Nigeria. Judicial corruption is especially dangerous to a society's well-being. Charges are filed, cases are promised, but are hardly ever concluded. That is the frustrating experience we have had in this country. There were good messages from Nigeria's Minister of Justice, the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime, as well as the Commonwealth Secretariat. The workshop ends on Tuesday. In Abuja, Adam Musambu. NTA News. Integration is the objective of coming together of the African countries and the only way to benefit is to provide a common front in commerce and international politics. This is the view of the Vice President Yami Oshimbajo at the ongoing African Union meeting in Kigali, Rwanda. State House correspondent Jide Onifade has the report. History is being made here in Rwanda as African leaders attempt to unite the people of the continent. This has been described as a huge ambition, but with the issuance of the African passport, it goes with the saying that a journey of 1,000 miles starts with a step. <laughs> it's mine, says President Idris W. Itme of the Republic of Chad and Chairman of the African Union as he receives the newly launched African e-passport. President Paul Kagame of Rwanda equally received ease from the chairperson of the African Union Commission. The African e-passport is a flagship project of Africa's Agenda 2063. The agenda envisions an Africa that is integrated and united. The first group of beneficiaries will include AU heads of states and government and other representatives of the AU member states. It is symbolic, says the Vice President of Nigeria, Yemi Oshibajo. Africa is a huge market if we work together. And uh, one of the critical things to do is to find how we can work that whole market together, how we can come together to form that market. And um, that's really for, me, for us, for the Nigerian uh, team, our focus is on how we can make maximum use of the, of the new uh, uh, free trade zone which, were, which has been proposed and which we are working on. There has not been a treaty public and private sectors in a meaningful and comprehensive way to strengthen the agricultural sector in Nigeria has been stressed. Minister of Agriculture Audobe said this at the launch of two new partnerships with local agribusinesses by the United States Agency for International Development, USAID. Joseph Johnson reports. The launch of Baban Gona and Hello Tractor is a move by USAID to address development and business challenges by increasing access to improved agricultural inputs and mechanization, better quality technical advisory services, and expanding market opportunities for smaller holder farmers. Minister of Agriculture Audu Ogbe commended the initiative and sued for more capital into the sector. I appeal to the youth. If you get into agriculture, you are investing in your future. 
remember, if we don't deal with the food challenge, we will never be able to cope with any other challenge. Nigeria's productivity is among the lowest in the world. And while Nigeria should be one of the world's largest rice producers and exporters, it is the world's largest rice importer. And that is something that working together we hope to change. Representatives of Babangona and Hello Tractor expressed willingness to help build the capacity of young entrepreneurs in order to grow their businesses and boost economic growth. The partnership is expected to turn Nigeria into a country in which smallholder farmers can transition from subsistence farming to commercial farming, with agriculture forming the basis of financial security and employment. From the U.S. Embassy Abuja, I'm Joseph Jensen, NTA News. Thank you, Joseph. Now turning to health matters, the Ministry of Health has launched the Rapid Results Initiative, RRI, a program which involves upgrading of 110 primary health care centers and the treatment of acutely malnourished children under five years in the Northeast. Chimde Mandubisi reports that a severely pronged approach is targeted at reducing the nation's disease burden and providing quality health care to all, especially the indigent, at little or no cost. The Rapid Results Initiative is expected to be implemented within the next 100 days with support from donor agencies like the World Health Organization and private health providers. We'll see the revitalization of one primary health care center in each senatorial district free screening of hepatitis, diabetes, and high blood pressure for thousands of people. Chukunansu Nwabweze has details. The participants drawn from Africa, Asia, and the Pacific are meeting in Abuja, Nigeria's capital city, to address the prevalent challenges of the decline in the quality of engineers being produced in developing and emerging economies of the world in order to find a way of transforming them into a highly competent and competitive workforce through intellectual exchange. We we'll have to agree at least on having similar learning outcomes of international standards. The initiative of your council is very, very important and indeed very crucial. I think if we work together like the tortoise and the rabbit that they work together, I think we'll achieve more. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Babachi David Lawa, Ministers of Environment, Amina Mohammed, and that of Power, Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashola, represented at the event, re-emphasized Nigeria's commitment towards the development of science, technology, engineering, as well as mathematics in the country. If our engineering education must be designed in such a way that we train human resources for national needs and for regional needs. The forum is therefore expected in the coming days to forge both intra- and inter-regional formidable cooperation for engineering accreditation and mobility of engineering personnel within and between Africa as well as Asia and the Pacific. In Abuja, parts and line ministries to synergize towards reading Nigeria of associated diseases from poor water, sanitation and hygiene is now. Most of the diseases that are affecting us are caused as a result of the open defecation. There's so much to be done and of course the SDGs are targeting that everybody should be involved. Development of a national roadmap for making Nigeria open defecation free by 2025 is also underway. In Abuja, Timothy Yusuf, NT News. We're still watching the news on NTA International, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. More news after the break. Do stay with us. Information is power. Everyone wants power. So feel powerful with the NTA News Mobile app, the one-stop information center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first-hand information on the U Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News Model app. Your access to real-time information. So great to have you back on the news on NTA International. 
Nigeria and South Africa have reiterated their determination to join forces in tackling security challenges facing the two countries. Permanent Secretary in Nigeria Ministry of Defense, Ambassador Danjuma Sheni, and Permanent Secretary for Defense and Military Veterans, South Africa, Sam Gulebe, said this at the two countries' defense industry seminar in Abuja. Basi Taikman reports. The seminar speakers say it's coming at a time Africa is facing enormous security challenges. The Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Defense, and his counterparts who led the South African delegation observe that the seminar will give opportunity for Africans to find lasting solutions to problems facing the continent. We would have a much more enhanced military cooperation based on certain legal framework. This Nigeria South Africa Defense Industry Seminar will play a critical role in assuring So I want to commend their efforts for initiating this meeting. The co-marshal, Boboye Oyayami, said the review meeting with the Driving School Association has become necessary to consolidate on the effort to produce well-trained drivers. He enjoined the association to continue to improve the capacity of its instructors with sound vehicles. On the issue of fake driver's license, the co-marshal said all loopholes have been blocked and perpetrators sanctioned. To be continuous capacity building, we must look at the current trends, what is going on, and uh, we must continue to update them. Chairman Elders Forum Driving School Association, Pastor Sonder Shololas, commended the call for the review meeting, which he said has assisted in ironing out some gray areas. Ilyasu Aliakubo, NTN News. Nigerians react to latest inflation figures released by the National Bureau of Statistics. Chair Zalamike has details of this and more on Business News. Glad to have you join us on this segment of the news. The National Bureau of Statistics has released the inflation rate for the month of June. The NBS says Nigeria's inflation accelerated to the highest rate in almost 11 years in June, putting pressure on policymakers to increase borrowing costs. These experts say calls for urgent action. I'm not surprised um, because um, it is, in my view, one of the fallouts, the side effects of the new uh, CBN um, uh, for extra regime, and that's, 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 that's part of why the central bank was hesitant in um, devaluing the currency, you know, all this while. Nigeria's inflation rate increased to 16.5% from 15.6% in May. The rise reflected higher prices for electricity, while food inflation rose to 15.3% from 14.9% over the same period. And to the currency market, the first trade of $780,000 occurred at 292 naira. Compassion, after 27 years in prison, showed that human rights and equality are stronger than discrimination and hate. Beyond that, he was a selfless civil servant. He never looked at what benefits he was going to get from whatever he was doing. It was the larger interest of the society that he wanted. Several activities were organized to mark the day in some parts of the world, especially in South Africa, where a rally driver, Gugu Zulu, even lost his life as he tries to climb Mount Kilimanjaro in honor of Madiba. Although there are no official events marking the day in Nigeria, which played major role during South Africa's apartheid era, the license of Mandela are deep in the... Similarly, Minister of State for Power and Housing, Mr. Bababa Shokuri, as well as former governor of Borno State, Ali Modi 